not upset. I just said to myself, I think it's an opportunity for me to buy a new one. <laughs> I think it's time for me to buy a new one. It's how you see things. It's how you see things. Christ, the Holy Spirit has been given to us so we can start seeing things differently. So we can start seeing our situation differently. If anything is close to you, it's for you to be able to say, am I going to see this as negative or am I going to see this as positive? If you're single for a very long time, how are you going to translate what it is you're going through? Am I going through this so I can do more for God? So when the man comes, he would have seen all my trend that I've been walking with Christ, I've been winning souls for Christ, then we can both fit in and walk that journey. It depends, it's how we see things. And that is the reason why the Holy Spirit has been given to us, for us to start seeing differently. Amen. Amen. We were reformed by the Spirit and we regained that dominion, the dominion that God said in Genesis 1, that you trample over this, that you would um, dominate the fish and the birds and the, you know, the everything that he said. So that is what we're supposed to be walking. We're supposed to be walking. I, I, another thing I say to women as well is, when a guy approaches you, you don't have to be rude to him. I'm never rude to him. It doesn't matter who you are. If you come to me and you pay me a compliment, I'll take it. And after taking it, I will engage you in a conversation. <laughs> like, oh, okay, so after the compliment, what's next? Can I have a number? Oh, for what's the reason? And then you tell me the reason. And after that, I find that most of them actually challenge them. I let them know, oh, I'm a married woman with two children, but yeah, if you're looking for somebody, yeah, like what type of woman? I'm able to engage them in conversation to actually see that actually the way you're thinking is not how you're supposed to think. Mm. Think different. Don't just go for any woman. I start educating them. <laughs> That's what I do, and it's funny. So, you know, this, just an example, this guy stopped me saying he wants to get married and blah, blah, blah. And I asked him straight, oh, so what do you do? He said, I'm into business. Can I have a business card, please? No. Mm. I was like, how can you not have a business card and you call yourself a businessman? <laughs> and that's what I'm going for. You can't carry me along if you can't even carry yourself. Hey. So by the time I ended up with him, he said to me that, do you know what? I just wish that all ladies can be like you. Because now I'm going to get into business. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. No, I'm not even. I, I think I walked, I did my shopping, and on my way back, I saw this guy at a printing shop. I saw him in a printing shop and he was um, inquiring about business. So I was actually laughing. I was like, okay, that's good. At least his thinking changed. Mm. And that's why we have the Holy Spirit, to be able to help other people to change how they think. Mm. That's, all, that, that's what it's all about when we're talking about embracing our royalty. You should be able to walk on the street and people will be able to say, ah, she's different. Mm. We can't just go to that one. Mm. Or we're going to that one to get ask advice on what to do. Mm -hmm. So I want us to start seeing differently. Why do we need to embrace our royalty? Mm. Because that's what God, God wants us to represent Him on this earth. Amen. Amen. His mercy and his compassion is what gave us back that royalty. Mm. royalty and it's none of our own effort. They tried the, all the dispensation, they tried it, you know, all the sacrificing the lamb and, you know, crying out to God and feeling as though God was not listening to them for like thousands, well, hundreds of years or whatever, I don't know how many years, but you know, they felt like they were doing it in their own strength, but nothing was working. And if anyone can please read for us Romans chapter 9, verse 15 to 16, please. Romans 9, from verse 15 to 16. For it says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, Amen. and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Mm -hmm. So there is not of him that will it, nor him that not it, for God has shown mercy. Amen. Amen. See, I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion, and mercy on whom I will have mercy. Nothing to do with your own effort, but it's because God also wants that relationship. He wants to bring us back so that he can have that one-to-one -one relationship. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 
that talks about all things have passed away, now we're new, new in Christ. There is nothing as difficult as trying to let a new believer to see that you are truly new. When God says you're new, you're new. There's nothing as difficult also as trying to get people to understand and hold on to the world. If God says only goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, why are you praying against your enemies? If God says if your ways please you, even your enemy will give you an answer. That's message translation. Why are we praying against enemies? It's only because we don't understand who we are. She's talking about because she knows that, look, I have signed something that doesn't talk about flyers, us not printing flyers. She was ready to get a solicitor and she knows that she's going to win. So if we have a God that we know that we're going to win no matter the circumstance, then why are we worried? Why do we fear? I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to go and take more money to go and buy a sat now because it's money that God will provide. Why am I angry? Why will I decide, oh, I'm not attending the conference because I'm so angry and I need to go to the police? No, I don't have time for that. Mm. That will sort itself out. God will provide me money. If I have to put it on whatever, He will provide it for me to do it. So we have to change the way we think. It starts from here. Yeah. From there, and then it starts to reflect outside. <clears throat> the next stage that we're going to be going to is the transformation stage. After being reformed, where Christ brings us back, now we're being transformed. Hmm. The deformation stage showed a woman looking at herself in the mirror, seeing herself at size 20, when she's like a size 10. Hmm. And now, in the transformation stage, we have a cat who's looking in the mirror and seeing a lion. Hallelujah. And that's how we're supposed to see ourselves. Don't let the outside define who you are. It's your inner person that defines who you are. And what is that inner person? It's the Holy Spirit that is in us. It's the Word of God that defines who we are. It, it, it really it boosts up your self-esteem, your self-image is different. The way you see things, the way God's perspective of life is just, it's just different. People look at you and they're thinking, why is that person so different? Why do they see everything as there is no problem? Because there is no problem True. to those who their life is in the hand of Christ. Mm. There is none at all. And I just bless I just bless God for the husband that I have because he always, always, every time I want to say something different, he always reminds me why I have to see things positively, no matter how negative it looks. Mm. That is why it's so important in your choosing or in your married life to always have somebody that you can walk the same journey that can strengthen you when you're down. Mm. Not someone that will bring you down when you're down. When the person is down and you're both down and no one's bringing anybody up and everything just becomes a whole load of mess. Mm. So it's important in the searching state to search right. How does this person see? And the best thing that I say sometimes is ask them a question. What do you think about divorce? See their opinions. Mm. See what they will say about it. What do you think about having a child at 25 weeks? God forbid, mm. but it happens. Mm. What do you think? See what they will say. Some men will say, oh, I can't stay. Oh, I'm going to leave. Or oh, God can never do that. Or oh, mm. all these things. Unfortunately, it happened to me. I mm. had a child at 25 weeks. Mm. We never discussed it. But I thank God because my husband always saw things differently. Mm. The first thing he said was, well, he just prayed to God that, Lord, I have never seen a child this size, mm. the size of my palm. What do we do with this? And God said, can you see the child breathing? He said, yeah, that's life. Hey. It will work. Mm. And because of that, what did he do? He came to me and he said, every day we have to speak the word into the life of this child because that's what he said, that... Look, speak the word to bones and bones gather flesh. This mm -hmm. one's not bone. Mark this is just a small child, but it can breathe. So speak the word to this child every day and this child will grow. The child was less than a pound. And every day we spoke the word. He could have easily walked away. 
and he felt like he wanted to walk away because he felt like, God, I love you so much. Why would you give me this? But it was, no, don't ask me why would 